Hello again, this is Aislinn. Welcome back to the History of Wicca series. I've decided to continue this series of videos because I've received a lot of questions about the history of Wicca. Now, it's difficult to give a full accounting of the history of Wicca, simply because there is so much debate. Some people claim it's as old as time itself. Other people claim it was invented in the 1950s. I would suspect neither of these is fully accurate, and the truth lies somewhere in between. Now, the easiest way to understand the history of Wicca is to look at religion as it developed over time through Europe. Now, following the Paleolithic era, man continued to develop. As ancient man developed, so did his religion. While the people spread across Europe, they slowly developed a belief in the afterlife as they adapted and evolved. As they evolved, the goddess and the god of ancient times also evolved. The god of the hunt slowly became the god of nature and of death. At the same time, the goddess of fertility also became the goddess of life and rebirth. As these concepts evolved, burial rituals began to develop. Evidence supporting the idea that ancient man believed in a life after death can be found in the burial customs of approximately 20,000 BCE and beyond. For clarification, BCE is also known as BC. BCE stands for Before Common Era. It's becoming a standard usage, so I've opted to use it in these videos. The Gravettians were the true innovators of burial customs, burying their dead with folk clothing and ornaments. They would even sprinkle their dead with red okra, giving the skin the appearance of life. Family members were often buried under the hearth, keeping them close to their loved ones. A man would often be buried with his weapons and tools, perhaps even with his dog. A woman might be buried with cooking implements or sewing implements. Everyone was given what ancient man believed he or she would need in the afterlife. Now, this belief in the afterlife didn't just come out of nowhere. All right, they observed it. And one of the ways they observed it was through dreams. Dreams are very much like death, if you think about it. To the outsider, you appear to be almost dead as you sleep. You might breathe and even move, maybe talk, but you still look very dead. But when you wake up, you can tell of many different things. You meet people, some of whom might actually be dead, such as parents, grandparents, other ancestors. You see trees and grass and buildings, and you have a multitude of experiences some of which are fantastical and quite impossible. Other people also experience dreams. This is true now, just like it was true then. Ancient men would have seen dreams as evidence that another world must exist, a world that is both invisible and untouchable by us most of the time. Since the dead could sometimes be encountered there, it must be the land of the dead, at least if you're ancient man trying to figure this out. And since the people in this dreamland had things like clothing, tools, pets, the departed must require those things in the afterlife. So if you're an early priest, you start to think that the afterlife must truly exist. Now, time moves on, and the people of early Europe practiced magic and developed a great many different rituals. They had rituals for fertility, for hunting, for battle, and for ensuring the continuity of their own people. To administer these rituals, a priesthood developed. In some areas of Europe, these rituals may have become known as the Witta. We're not entirely sure of this. I mean, it's possible that they were called something else, but this is generally thought to be where the word Wicca eventually came from. As a group, the Witta would be known as the Witten, the Council of the Wise. In days of old, these respected people were doctors, magicians, lawyers, priests. They were everything and anything that was required. They were consulted by kings and emperors. They served their community as judges. And they were a connection to the gods for their people. Before the coming of Christianity, early Europe was a scattering of different pagan religions. There was no centralization of these religions, despite what some people like to say and so they evolved separately from each other. However, though these religions sometimes differed in form, they were the same at their very core. 
and they, in part, were the inspiration for modern Wicca. It is important to note you cannot find a true claim that can be verified that shows us that anyone practicing modern Wicca today can trace their practices back to ancient times. Modern practices may be inspired by ancient beliefs, but there is no direct connection. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video and I'll be back shortly with the next installment where we talk about what happened when Christianity started to rise throughout Europe. Until then, blessed be.